While BMW is currently full steam ahead for its plans to produce electric vehicles for mass market customers, the BMW iX3 for most of us in the world, minus the US, and the BMW i4 are just two examples, it's also been careful to couch its talk of future products by using the term electrified rather than electric. This term, as I'm sure most of you know by now, is a blanket term designed to include everything from mild hybrids and plug-in hybrids through to battery electric vehicles and hydrogen electric fuel cell vehicles. And while BMW is working right now on battery electric production vehicles, it's very keen for everyone to know that it's also working very hard on its next generation of hydrogen fuel cell vehicle technology. Which is why at the Frankfurt Motor Show last year, BMW previewed what it called the iHydrogen Next, essentially a concept car powered by the company's latest generation of hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle technology. And now it's ready to talk about what it has under the hood of that vehicle, or perhaps under the floor. So we're about to take a look and see how it compares to some of BMW's other vehicles and how it compares to electric vehicles in general. First up, let's get the obvious out of the way. I know many of you aren't keen on this channel covering hydrogen fuel cell technology because the current carbon footprint associated with hydrogen fuel production, most commercial hydrogen today is produced through the steam reforming of natural gas, is anything but green. But just as electrical grids have gotten a whole lot cleaner and greener over the last decade, thus making electric cars cleaner and greener to operate, than they once were. The hope from hydrogen fuel cell supporters is that the hydrogen fuel production process will become a whole lot greener over the next 10 or 20 years through the improved use of electrolysis techniques and new chemical production techniques, none of which rely on fossil fuels. And I get it. I'm not going to spend this video assessing those techniques. And frankly, there are still some massive inefficiencies in the whole hydrogen fuel ecosystem that I think need to be addressed before hydrogen fuel cell technologies can become mainstream. If you haven't already guessed, personally, I prefer battery electric vehicles. But we should take a look at BMW fuel cell technology as just revealed, because I think it's interesting to see how it compares to past fuel cell technology and current battery technology. The next generation fuel cell stack used in the iHydrogen Next, which by the way is essentially a BMW X5, was developed in conjunction with BMW's hydrogen fuel cell partner Toyota. It is, apparently, the same system that we'll see in Toyota's next generation Mirai fuel cell sedan. A car that was originally due to debut this year at the Olympics, but whose launch may or may not be delayed by, you know, current world events. Unlike the 114 kilowatts produced by the current generation Mirai fuel cell system, which frankly, based on a short time behind the wheel, was one I felt was very underpowered for such a large vehicle, the iHydrogen Next's fuel cell stack can output 125 kilowatts of power, with the fuel cell stack itself sitting under the bonnet of the car, where naturally it sucks in oxygen from the outside air and combines it with hydrogen from the fuel tanks inside the stack, to create electricity and water. The fuel cell stack, in addition to being a little more powerful than the previous generation unit, is supposed to be more efficient and is now made in a far more automated fashion, which should dramatically reduce the cost of the vehicle fitted with them. In case you didn't know, previous fuel cell stacks were generally mainly hand assembled. But if we look at actual power output, 125 kilowatts is nowhere near enough power for a vehicle the size of a BMW X5 under heavy acceleration. And thus, BMW has fitted what it's calling a peak power battery pack to supplement the power from the fuel cell stack. Together, the system puts out 275 kilowatts to the wheels, which is far more appropriate for the vehicle size. Think of it a little bit like the i3 Rex, the Rex bit. It's also more than the power output of the iX3, which tops out at 210 kilowatts, by the way. That said, the iX3 is smaller. Of course, when talking about an all-electric car like the iX3, the battery packs are located beneath the vehicle's floor, integrated into the vehicle chassis. In the case of the high hydrogen next, that's exactly where BMW has put the fuel tanks. There's one large longitudinal one and one smaller one that sits transversely under the rear seat area. In total, BMW says the fuel cell tanks can store around 5.89 kilograms of compressed hydrogen fuel, which is an improvement on the 5 kilogram capability of the Mirai. 
It's not clear what range you can expect from this, but unless there have been phenomenal, incredible fuel stack improvements in efficiency, I'd expect no more than about 360 miles maximum range from this larger, less aerodynamic vehicle. But I should note that that guess is really a guess from me. I've got nothing to back that up. Back to the vehicle design, the motor and that boost battery are located at the very rear of the vehicle, meaning that the load bay is significantly going to be impacted. Or perhaps you're not going to see the low load bay floor capabilities that many have come to expect in a battery electric vehicle. And that's something that hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles have struggled with for many years, a reduced load bay capacity when compared to a battery electric vehicle, primarily because they have to shoehorn high pressure fuel tanks, a fuel cell stack and a battery and a drivetrain into the vehicle. Like a hybrid car, that's a lot to fit in under the floor or under the hood. BMW says it will bring a version of this vehicle to market in 2022 as a limited production vehicle and says a higher volume series production hydrogen vehicle from the brand could appear sometime in the second half of this decade at the absolute earliest. So unlike Toyota, which is still for bore in its support of hydrogen, this vehicle from BMW appears to be a just-in-case measure to ensure that it has the technology ready to go in the likelihood that hydrogen claws itself back from the current position in the zero tailpipe emission sales market. But for that to happen, we're going to have to see an explosion in hydrogen filling station capacity. Uh, I mean, a gross, as well as an improved reliability. And based on some of the anecdotal stories I've heard from those who leased Toyota Mirai and Honda Clarity fuel cell cars in California recently, that's far from where we are right now. Granted, electric vehicle charging infrastructure was pretty poor for a very long period of time and frankly still is in many parts of the world. But there's nothing in this prototype from BMW that makes me think hydrogen will be gaining popularity anytime soon. Instead, well, honestly, I'd rather see hydrogen employed as a range extending alternative to the internal combustion engine in vehicles that really do need power beyond the range of today's battery packs. Think massive long distance big rigs in super remote areas or machines that need to be off grid for extended periods of time. Or perhaps even maybe a small low power range extenders in plug in vehicles with battery ranges of a couple of hundred miles. Something that doesn't get used all the time, but is there for when you need it. What do you think? That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon or feed our coffee habit with Kofi. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, stay safe, wash your hands and uh, keep evolving.